Hello friends, it's me, I'm back. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to make any videos last month. It's been a very interesting last six weeks or so. I will take one moment just to kind of touch up on what has been going on and then we're just gonna move on past um, starting on Thanksgiving, my son got Rona. I thought maybe I had gotten it too because about a week later I didn't feel very well, but we had canceled our Thanksgiving. Um, fast forward into December and everyone just decided to just keep getting sick and we ended up canceling Christmas because myself and my daughter and my husband all had Rona. And I, I was surprised because, like I said, I thought maybe I'd already had it, so I was probably safe. But apparently I did not have it. I must have had something else for Thanksgiving. Um, so, anyways, everyone tested. Everyone was positive. Everyone was very sick for a solid 8 to 10 days. So, it was not a fun time at all. I would not recommend it. We did not enjoy it. But... We are still, I am still recovering. Um, I did go back to work yesterday. It was my first day back since being sick. And it was okay, but it was also slow. So that was probably to my benefit, but it was fine. I still have some upper congestion stuff that I'm dealing with and extreme fatigue. <clears throat> so that's that. Moving on now, um, because of everything that was going on with the holidays and the sicknesses and all the things, I didn't get to knit nearly as much as I would have liked to. Had a lot of pain in my hands and just couldn't enjoy it, but I did do some things. One of the things I did do um, is I completed this. You guys, this is my Andrea Mallory's Night Shift Shawl, and I love it so much. There is nothing about this that I am not completely in love with. It feels wonderful. This is made with two colorways of the Noro Akari yarn. One of them is a is a gray, and one of them was a peachy pink. And it's uh, one of those, I think it's maybe a 200 gram large, large balls um, that it comes, I just bought one of each color and I just let them change and shift as they wanted to. This pattern is done in the mosaic knitting style. As we can see, it just changes and changes. Um, you start down here at this very tippy and it's worked asymmetrically across. And I started with my background color as the gray with my pink as the, um, I don't know, the B color, which made the little dots and stuff. And I went and I went and I went until I felt like I had a lot more pink yarn than I had gray. So then I flipped it and I started doing my gray, or I'm sorry, I started doing my pink as my background and my gray as my B accent color and I did an extra repeat and I still had some yarn left and I wanted to use it up so then I just did like 15 or 20 rows of just alternating back and forth garter stitch as an edge and this pattern has the I-cord built in all the way around so you get that gorgeous I-cord edge it is big. I'll stand up and see if we can give you a little more. Like I said, I did add an extra repeat onto mine because I found that with a lot of people's, I don't know, I felt like it just wasn't, well, and I blocked it. Boy, did I block this. I wanted this to get as big across the top edge of that wingspan as possible because I found that a lot of people while this pattern comes out very deep as far as down the center of it to where the point is at the bottom here, it just didn't seem to be being very, it didn't seem to be being very wide. And I knew I needed it to be able to wrap without it just falling off of me all the time. So 
I, I did add in that extra repeat. And I wanted to use as much yarn as I could. I do have a little bit of yarn left, um, but I felt like that garter edging that I did was as wide as I wanted that to be. I didn't want to make it any wider, but I have just a little bit of yarn left. Hold on, I'll show you guys what I have left. <clears throat> just a wee little bit of each one. So that's what I've got. And I think what I can do and what I probably will do, I think I'm going to make myself like an ear warmer, maybe a beanie. I don't know, I'll weigh this and see about how much it is. Um, but I figured I could make myself either a ear warmer or a beanie to match when I wear this. But I love this so much, guys. I wish I could tell you how beautifully drapey and soft and magical this yarn became. Um, it wasn't uncomfortable when I was working with it by any stretch. It was fine. It just wasn't super soft and, you know, it didn't have much flex to it. It was a little rough, you know. I think a lot of Noro yarns are that way. This one, that in the scheme, this feels pretty good, but because this is mosaic and the, the stitches are quite dense, I guess, um, with you pulling all those, carrying all those strands, slipping stitches, you're not, you're only ever working with one color, but you're, you're slipping a lot of stitches. So the fabric can get quite dense. And so it started to feel kind of like, I don't know how good this is gonna be, but it, um, when I blocked it, it just became like butter. Beautiful. I love it. So that is my night shift shawl. I love it. And I'm having a heat stroke right now. So I'm going to take it off. Woo. Okay. Something else I worked on. And this is I'm sad. I'm a little sad. I did get a um, Advent yarn box from Trilogy Yarns, and I loved them so much. All the yarns were gorgeous, first of all. And I started this pattern, and the plan was to open a skein every day, do use that amount of that skein, and move on. And I chose the pattern, and I, I thought I was going to love it, and I kept going, and I kept going, and I got to a point where I thought, first of all, there's no way I'm going to be able to keep going. This is getting huge. And I just picked the wrong pattern. That's all I did. It's beautiful. I want to say it's gorgeous. I love the way this looks. I do not like it on me. I actually loathe it on me and I'm probably going to frog it. And that's going to really, I'm really not looking forward to that because half of this, the first half of this the ends are sewn in because I was trying to be a good steward and take time every so often to sew in ends. And I don't know if you've ever frogged anything where you've already sewn the ends in. It's not fun. But this yarn is so beautiful, I hate to waste it. So this is what it is. I'll show it to you just so you can get an idea of the gorgeousness of it. It is a cowl pattern. And as you can see, it just kept changing and changing. The bind off was not good. I did not care for the bind off at all. I did the recommended bind off and I guess I just didn't do it tight enough. Usually it's, you have to worry about being too tight. Um, and I just tried to keep a relaxed gauge. And so my, my bind off edge flared either way. That doesn't matter because it's just too long. And this isn't even all 25 colors. <laughs> that came in my advent, it's too long. And when I put it on, it's just a lot. It is a lot and it makes me so sad because number one, I think this is beautiful. I mean, as a hooded cowl, it's still too big, it's too big. It's just too long. Um, you can't see all of the amazingness of it. And as you put it down, it's just, it's just so big. It just doesn't lay properly. It, you can't enjoy and appreciate the beauty of all the skeins. And it makes me sad. And I'm going to frog it. But it is pretty. But I want something I can use. I want something I'll be able to use. 
and love. So that is that. Um, what else did I? I am still working on some things because I got sick. Well, one thing in particular. I wanted this project because I intended to have it finished and wearing it on Christmas. But I got sick and knew that I wasn't going to be having Christmas outside of my home other than with myself and my sick son. So, and the fact was I didn't feel like working on it because I didn't feel good at all. So I did not complete this, but it is almost done. And I will just have it for next Christmas. It is the, what is this called? The Sophie Shawl by, I think it's Petite Knits. So this looks fun. So it's funny looking. Um, I started with, well, when I'm, I don't know if you've done this pattern before. I love this pattern. There's the Sophie scarf version, and this is the shawl version, and this is the large shawl version, so it's really big. But you start here, and you work across. Um, and I had some Christmas yarn. It's the glittery Christmas yarn, and I had bought a couple of skeins of the variegated, and then I had bought just the plain red. It's the I Love This Yarn. I just bought the red sparkle to match with it, but I started out with just the variegated and I went and I went and I went all the way until I got to the center. And then I just decided when it was on me, you weren't gonna be able to see this dividing line. Um, I started adding in rows of the red and as I went across, I asked, you know, just progressively started adding in more red and less variegated. And here I am at the very tippity end here that I've gotten to. I have very little left to go. This is a big, big, big wrap because it's still um, a big scarfy wrap, whatever. Anyways, obviously it's still connected to the yarn and everything so you can't really get a full idea but it's really soft it's really squishy it's really cozy and I think I will love it next Christmas just to have something to make me feel jolly right so that's that that's just something I was I just wanted something mindless and easy and this is a very mindless easy little pattern it's all garter stitch with an I-cord edge surrounding. I love an I-cord edge. Pretty crazy about it. I've become quite fond of I-cord edges. And patterns that don't have them, I just kind of want to add them myself. Oh, I'm sorry. I know this isn't the most professional video. Not that I'm super professional anyways, but I'm telling you, I just, I've lost my muchness. I've got to get it back. Um, another thing that I did work on is, it's not completed, so it doesn't look all that impressive right now, but I think we can all get an idea. This is a crochet hat. It will be a crochet hat that I'm working on for someone special for a gift. I doubt they'll watch this video, but... I don't want to say. So this is crocheted in one piece flat and then you bring it together and seam it. This is the brim of the hat down here and this is the top of the hat up here. Um, I will, once this is completed, I will definitely film a little update, show you guys the finished project and um, we can go over how this is constructed then if we want, but this is like how it looks or how it will look like this. And then oh, obviously the hat is, it has this and you can flip the brim up if you want to make it more like fitted on your head, which that's coming right to the crown of my head now. But it has this really beautiful 
detail and I love it. I think it really actually looks like a knit, a knit project, but it's just crochet and it's actually very easy. Um, but that will be a gift um, that I'm gonna give here in a couple weeks. So I gotta get that finished so that it's ready. And that's really about it, guys. I really focused on that night shift shawl. I had a lot of fun making that. I highly recommend that pattern, especially if you've never done any color working with knitting. I think mosaic is the way to really start out because um, as I mentioned, you aren't having to hold multiple strands of color or multiple strands of yarn going across the rows. You literally just have one yarn you're working with. Everything else just is not being bothered with. You're knitting with one color at a time across a row. So um, it came out beautiful and I just love it. I did cast on um, Andrea's um, Find Your Fade. I think it's the Find Your Fade shawl. I purchased seven different colorways, which was recommended a fingering weight and you start with one and then you just knit for a little bit according to the pattern. I like the pattern shape. It's very interesting looking. It kind of reminds me of like a kite type shape. It's not like a true triangle and it's not a regular asymmetrical triangle. It's an interesting shape, um, but as you get so far in, then you start bringing in the next color and you kind of blend those two colors for a little while and then you drop the original color and just work with the next color for a little while and then you bring in the third color and so on and so forth and it's just really pretty and I wanted to give that a shot so I did cast that on even though I should not but more than knitting and crocheting lately I have I just decided to pick up some of my cross stitching and I started working on some of my cross stitch projects again. Um, I think what I will do, um, maybe in the next few days, hopefully I'll be really starting to get some more energy. Um, I intend to make my first floss tube video on this channel because I have not yet shared any cross stitch. I do not want to I thought about it. I thought, oh, I could just show everything. And I thought, you know what? I don't want to do that. Everyone here doesn't enjoy cross stitching. And everyone that comes maybe to see a floss tube video doesn't necessarily want to see knitting or crocheting or whatever. So I'm going to make those separate videos. They will always clearly be labeled in the titles, whether it is yarn that is happening. So it'll say knitting, crochet, or it will say floss tube. And you will all know that if it says floss tube, then it is going to be cross stitching. So I think I will start out my first floss tube video with a whip parade so that we can all get acquainted with the ridiculous number of whips that I have. And I think I've completed two things ever. I just started cross stitching. <laughs> Let's preface this with, I just started cross stitching in 2021 because amazingly, boy, in 2020 of December, I had COVID again for Christmas and my birthday again, I had it. We're repeating, we're doing some repeating here. Anyways, um, I had been sick and I was watching yarn goodness on the YouTube as I was convalescing and you know how the YouTube algorithm just starts kind of doesn't always stick with the same exact things you're watching when you don't keep picking videos. It'll start showing you new things. And it was so funny because I'm watching all this crochet and knit and I'm just kind of laying in a catatonic state watching this. And then all of a sudden this video comes on and I will not, never forget. It was a lady by the name of Teresa Little Stitcher, and she was doing a video on Hades. And I was like, what in the heck is a Hade? And wait, this isn't even knitting and crocheting. What is this? This is cross stitching, embroidery. I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't do that stuff. Um, I just knew she had needles and threads. And 
she was making this amazing full coverage heaven and earth design hey portrait it was like an actual like a painting like a work of art and she was doing it with a needle and thread and i fell into watching everything about that and i went on to heaven and earth designs and i ordered a kit because i didn't know how to kit up things and realized very soon after that those things take like three or four months for them to put together and get to you and I didn't want to wait that long so in the beginning of the year of 2021 as soon as I could get out I went and started buying all the cross stitch everything I fell off all the way in there I got some of the printed stamp things from Amazon to start out and then I quickly fell into buying fabulous beautiful hand dyed linens and fabrics and hand dyed flosses and silks and you, you guys if you're anything like me you know you know anyways that will be coming up hopefully sometime this week I will drag out one of those totes back there is three of them are yarn one of them has all the cross stitching goodness other than the things that I just actually have out because I've been working on it. And here's one thing that I was working on over Christmas. I'll just give you a sneak peek. This lady, she's called the Yule Queen, and I know you can't really tell. This is a very meager start. She will have a huge, beautiful gown that is a very intricate and detailed and gorgeous, and it says like Mary Yule, and it has a something going around her and everything but anyway i started her i think she's just beautiful she's gonna be so pretty when i finish her one day anyways thank you guys i hope all of you had a beautiful wonderful holiday um in whatever way that you celebrated it and i hope that all of you have a blessed new year and we're all going to be super duper prosperous and happy and joyful and kind and filled with love. And we are love and we do love and we be loved and all the good stuff. That's what I'm hoping for everybody. So thank you everyone. And I will see you next time. Bye.